The former chair of the government's tax working group says he's disappointed but not surprised that its proposal for a capital gains tax was rejected outright. The tax working group recommended wide-ranging changes to the tax system covering second properties, including the family batch, land, farms, most shares and business assets. That's all off the agenda now. Sir Michael Cullum was the chair of the working group and I asked him what he thinks of the news that there will be no capital gains tax in any form. I feel it's always going to be very hard to get New Zealand First and Winston Peters over the line on, on capital gains taxes. Um, I mean, their, their voting base is very much older uh, than the average, very much more Pākehā than the average. In other words, very much the people who actually own capital assets. Um, so it was going to be more difficult for them to, to deal with the issue. And uh, another signal, fairly early on, it was, it was reported to me that Troy Barker was advising them and he was publicly attacking capital gain. So um, I had this sort of sinking feeling that, that it was going to be quite difficult. But I, I had hoped that at least we might have got something like a, a broad-based capital gains on land over the line because that's the, the largest area of um, problems in terms of misdirected investment in the country. OK, there's a few things in there. Let's start with Winston Peters in New Zealand first. Do you think he'd made his mind up before this report even came out? Uh, no, no, I, th I think to refer to Winston, that, that wouldn't be so. I'm, sh I'm sure he gave uh, consideration to it, but, but everything in his background would tend to suggest, I mean, not to be too unkind to Winston, he's always been more in favour of increasing spending than increasing taxes to pay for it. Um, so faced with a whole new tax, one that was always controversial, and one you could argue about where the instance of that tax was going to lie, um, the working group was quite clear it would be very much on the, on the upper end of the uh, income and wealth scale. Um, then it's not not and and given that New Zealand First is is not exactly. Um, shall we say, flourishing in the opinion polls. So they haven't got a lot of political capital to use up on something of this sort. So this is all on Winston Peters, in your view, in New Zealand First? I, 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 uh, my understanding is that, that Labour has come around to the position of just um, perhaps a, a, a tax on um, rental housing. I, I personally have found that quite difficult to support because um, at least with rental housing, people are providing a service to other people in, in, in the form of, of housing. Um, whereas, the four, whereas with, say, um, uh, holiday homes, some of which are worth a lot of money, um, those are purely personal use, but very substantial capital gains can arise out of them. So it, it did seem to me that, that it got narrowed down to a point where I personally would have felt more comfortable with an outcome with, with no CGT than one which was so limited that it would have got very little income in and would have singled out one group. Do you know um, if New Zealand First was comfortable with going ahead with a CGT on second properties or they objected to that as well? Um, they, they objected to everything, as, far, as, as I understand it. They, they did not support any form of, of CGT. So this so has come down to... Given that, sorry to interrupt, but given you described the voter base there of New Zealand First and you talked about their political capital, so in your mind, how would you characterise this decision? Has politics prevailed over principle here in the end? Well, that wouldn't be unusual, Lisa, would it, when it comes to things of, of this sort? But particularly, I mean, this, this is the reality of MMP politics, that that you have multi-party governments uh, and um, just because one party is much larger than the others, it can't bully its way into having majority. You have to respect um, the rights of minor parties who are involved in that government. So in this case, um, there's clearly not a majority support in Parliament for, for such a tax. And I think the Prime Minister sort of made clear, as long as she's Prime Minister, uh, that that issue of a capital gains tax is now off the agenda. But has the reverse happened? Has the has the party, the smaller party, bullied the bigger party here? Not bullied. It's just effectively a, a veto power. I mean, if if you look at the European Union with with 27 members, only one of them had to object to the extension of the uh, Brexit deadline, and it would have been dead. And Britain would now be out of Europe without um, without a deal at all. That that's just the nature of these kinds of agreements. Um, you, you can expect a degree of compromise on occasions, but on on this occasion, uh, I don't think it's surprising, but it's disappointing because well, this, um, yes. I think to some extent, I think to some extent, Mr. Peters understood where a lot of his vote comes from, which is not from people who've got large capital assets. So, but ultimately, it seems like there was zero compromise at all. 
You talk about well, some compromise. Well, there couldn't really be much of a compromise um, in terms of what was on the table for discussion because if, if you took away um, just a CGT on rental housing, that left nothing anyway. So you'd introduce a bill with no content, which is a rather pointless exercise, really. Well, do you feel like your whole work has been a pointless exercise then as well? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, if, if you look at the work we did, the bulk of, of the two reports together, because much of the interim report wasn't repeated in the final report, is not on CGT. Um, because CGT was complicated, we spent a lot of time on it in the last three or four months going through the details. But the government's accepted a very large amount of the other parts of, of the report. Um, that's being worked into the, the current uh, work program for IRD uh, and signals around further work uh, carrying on later uh, on other parts of the report. So, so that's but, very pleasing, and particularly some of the mm. conceptual stuff has been accepted in there. But the rationale behind this, if you listened to Jacinda Ardern and the Labour Party, was about a fairer tax system, creating a fairer yes. tax system. So it's not happening. What does that mean? What does that say about us? We don't care about fairness? Well, I think we're, we're capable, like almost all human beings. I don't think New Zealanders are any different in that regard of having two sides of our brain. Um, one that says we want lots and lots of goodies provided by the government. The other says we're not really all that keen on paying for them. Um, and in this case, we've got a tax system in New Zealand which is very only very moderately redistributed by international standards because um, the income tax progression from the bottom rate to the top is relatively small and GST is somewhat regressive, so you take the two together, is is not very redistributive. Um, CGT would have made the tax system somewhat more redistributive, but, but not hugely so. We still would have had one of the uh, less redistributive tax systems in the world. Uh, in, uh, by the way, I mean the, 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 the developed economies. Yeah, so what are the consequences of not doing this? What are we left with now? Well, if you look out to the long-term future, all else being equal, then, um, bluntly, people on low to middle incomes will end up bearing um, or paying probably a somewhat higher tax than would otherwise have been the case, or, alternatively, that we will have less money for for social services, new drugs, um, and so on and so forth. Those, so, in those your are view, we are fund Yeah. So, in your view, are we fundamentally worse off as a society for having not picked up this mantle and run with it? I think I think this is a chance to actually grasp the nettle. Um, this is the first time that, since 1989, I think the discussion document was put out by the fourth Labour government. Uh, first time that there's been a sort of coherent and well worked through proposition. There were some uh, quite a few shaggy ends we worked through with further discussion, but but basically a reasonably complete um, proposal. Um, that's gone, and I suspect. I mean, I said before this some nights ago that I thought this was probably last chance saloon. That's that might be an exaggeration. As a historian, I ought to know better than to make statements like that. But I, th I think it'll be some, quite some time before um, people come back to this. And, and if and when we do, um, probably the demographic factors will be even less in favour of getting support for it because we will have an older population, um, young people with few assets, older people having accumulated the assets, but older people tending to vote more than younger people. Well, considering everything that you've just stated, Sir Michael, you were in government for nine years. You didn't get a capital. You didn't bring in a capital no. gains tax. Jacinda Ardern no. has said that that's it. She will no longer yeah. campaign or push this. So, put bluntly, in your lifetime, do you expect to see a capital gains tax? Well, um, no. Uh, I don't actually expect to live to a very old age, but but nevertheless, um, I, I I don't expect to see it. But the only reminder the former uh, Premier of Southern Rhodesia said, not black majority rule in my lifetime, and there was. So um, if I hang in there till the age of my mother, which was 98 when she died, who knows? <laughs> And that was Sir Michael Kylan, who was the chair of the, the tax working group and, of course, the former finance minister.